Beauty Junkie. Welcome to my channel. Today I am getting into my lip balm, lip tint, and lip gloss collection just in time for Valentine's Day. I wanted to show you some swatches, talk about differences in formulas, my preferences in these categories. I'm not going to do a ranking because there's a lot of stuff here, but I'll just kind of mention my favorites for different occasions. Um, so Valentine's Day is coming up no pressure to celebrate, right? Um, Valentine's Day is one of the American holidays that I guess I used to really get excited about if I had a boyfriend. Um, I've been with my boyfriend now <laughs> for several years and because of COVID and all of that and the fact that it's on Monday <laughs> this year um, and we have like prior engagements on Mondays already <laughs> planned for that evening um, that we can't really change. <laughs> We're probably not really going to be celebrating Valentine's Day in the traditional way and I bet a lot of couples won't be either this year. Um, I'm sure some people will have reservations at a restaurant already but Monday is kind of an odd night. I'm sure people will be celebrating the weekend before, the weekend after. We might do some takeout one of our favorite places. I imagine that will happen, but I'm also just not a really particularly romantic person. But I think a lot of that usually falls on the men in relationships, unfortunately, on this holiday. There's a lot of pressure to give flowers and roses and candy and... I mean, I love candy. I do love flowers, but it's not... It's so expected that like, yes, it's nice, but it's not really, I mean, once I, I hate to say this, but it's not really that special feeling when it's like, oh, forced on a certain day. You know what I mean? Um, I think when those things are given to you just randomly, it's a lot more surprising <laughs> um, and probably a little bit more appreciated but you know what I mean I know I sound really um, pessimistic <laughs> but I don't know if anyone any of you guys are feel the same way I do about Valentine's Day it's just not a holiday I feel like if you're in a relationship for a long time that you're like oh my gosh it's Valentine's Day <laughs> You know, you're just not as excited about it. But I'm also totally supportive of those of you that are anti-Valentine's Day as well. Like, whatever floats your boat. The, this video is just about lip glosses and stuff. If you're into that, then I think you'll find this video somewhat helpful. Because I'll be doing a lot of swatches. Unfortunately, it's going to be in just indoor lighting. Kind of artificial light but I think you'll get a gist of like the textures and the tones. I will say um, when it comes to lip color swatches depending on the formula the color can look very different on my wrist versus on my lips and it's gonna look different on you depending on your undertone and your skin tone and just like the chemistry of your lips how it interacts with the formula. So let's get into it. So in case you want to know what is on my lips right now, just off the bat, this is not really a lip gloss, but it looks very glossy. It is a liquid lipstick. This is the Chanel Ultra Tenue, whatever this thing is called, La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue Gloss. So I guess it's considered a lip gloss, but there's also like this liquid long lasting lipstick with it. Um, this is the shade 48 Soft Rose. It's fairly deep, but I find the shade really flattering on me. It's not something I wear a lot. To be honest, I don't grab for these a lot, but I really should because the lip gloss that comes with this duo is just clear. It's just a clear topper, but it lasts so long. It is so smooth. It's one of the best like clear lip gloss formulas out there, in my opinion. I know a lot of people agree with me on that. I actually have two shades of this. I also have the Timeless Beige. 166. This one looks is nude. Everything on my wrist looks really orange when it's nude. Uh, it looks a little bit better on my lips. Um, but I think this shade right here is a little bit more flattering on me. 
So I'll just talk about those, get those out of the way. So these are kind of in a hybrid category. Some people might think of these more as like a liquid lipstick with just a lip gloss top topper. That's probably the best category to consider these because it's not like a true true lip gloss that you're getting this color from. It's the part underneath. <laughs> um, but that's on my lips. My next smallest category of lip products is a lip tint. So lip tints are something that I feel look very different swatch than on the lips and especially in this lip tint category. I think it's like the one category that uh, that's really obvious. Um, these two actually I think look very different on my lips than what um, the swatches look like. So, so I'll go ahead and put the swatches of both of these. The first one you're going to see is this K-Beauty brand. I'm not sure. Romand. Romand is the brand. This is the Glasting Water Tint in 04 Vintage Ocean. It's kind of a brick red. The swatch looks funny. And this is the Victoria Beckham Bisu Lip Tint right next to it. So go ahead and show that swatch. So you guys can see like, they're kind of odd colors, like Bisu is a little bit brown, but it looks different on my lips. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna swatch every one of my lips. It's gonna destroy me. Um, but these are really great. I would say this is a lot less expensive, the Ramond one. Um, there's actually so many lip tints from K-Beauty, J-Beauty, Asian Beauty brands that are mid-range or low-priced, like under $10, but less than $20. Victoria Beckham is more than that, but I feel like the quality is still there with these other Asian beauty, with these beauty brands, Asian beauty brands. Um, that it's not really worth getting another one of these when like they feel pretty much the same <laughs> and they look pretty similar. But I love the idea of a, a lip tint because it it just leaves behind a stain but there's not really any texture. Some people might think that their drips, their lips kind of remain get a little bit dry with a lip tint. I can totally see that, but it is a way to kind of have a low maintenance lip look, but long lasting. So it's kind of like the opposite. It's kind of like a gloss, low maintenance, but it lasts longer, but you don't get that like comfort in my opinion. But anyways, lip tints are something I would explore. Lip balms, I think, is a huge category that has absolutely exploded. Maybe because we've been wearing masks I'm not really sure. I love it. I love a colored lip balm. I just think we all like juicy looking lips. They make, I mean, when you have a little bit of moisture, it just makes your lips look fuller, younger. It's quite the opposite of a matte lipstick. So, I mean, there's something really for everyone in the lip world, but I have a lot of different choices here from high-end brands. I'll point to my favorites out of this group that I have. So I have something from M Cosmetics. This is the Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizer in Magic Hour. I don't know that I'm so crazy about the color of this one. I'll go ahead and put up all the swatches of this group of lip balms so you guys can see swatches. Anyways, this M Cosmetics Magic Hour, I think the color is just okay, you know, a little bit peachy, not too exciting, but the the way that this mechanism works, you to twist, although you can't twist it down, so you gotta commit to that twisting it up, but it's just a, such a comfortable, easy, juicy formula that I really like it. Um, I just kind of forget to reach for it, unfortunately, and it doesn't really last long, and that's kind of true with a lot of lip balms, unfortunately. It's just constantly reapplying, but I think they look really good while they are on your lips. And I do think some formulas do a better job of, like, staying on a little bit longer, but they generally do not last through food or drink. This next one is from Shantikai. This is the Lip Chic, and then I have... 
the Chantecaille Lip Veil. The lip cheeks are kind of like a glossy lipstick. And it's actually very similar, in my opinion, to the Chanel Rouge Coco Flash, which I'm about to show you. And that it's colorful, it's shiny, um, and it's easy to apply. But this one has a little bit of stick. When you s swipe it, it's not as smooth. Um, but I'm sure a lot of people would get along fine with this T-Rose shade. I just don't find it incredibly unique. And then their Lip Veil formula, I wasn't super impressed with for the price of this. It's a lot smoother, slipperier, more slippery. Doesn't have the same amount of shine, it just has a little bit of sheen. Maybe this is the wrong color for me. I just felt like this is a sheer lipstick, not so much a balm. I didn't get a lot of comfort for, from it. And maybe that's what I should think of it as more as a sheer lipstick than something that's really gonna hydrate. This next one is from Sicily. This is an interesting product. So this is a, a shiny, balmy type of deal. This is the Fido Lip Tw Twist in shade one. It looks like it's just gonna be a lipstick pencil, but it's actually pretty shiny. And this one has like some glittery, re shimmery le reflect in it. And it's, it's very much a nude. But it's just very unexpected that it's in a pencil, which is I, I kind of like that. Um, the shade doesn't show up super well on me, so I probably would need something uh, a little bit rosier for my skin. But this one is like a drier balm, like it's not super juicy. And when you pin it on at first, before you work it in, it's a little bit dry, but then it warms up. So it's almost like um, kind of waxy almost. Pat McGrath has a couple different formulas and I have to say Pat McGrath lip balm formulas are not my favorite compared to her other lip offerings. So this one here, this is the Lip Finish Divinal Lip Shine, Nude Venus. I'm not sure the name of this. Um, this guy is very balmy, shiny like that swatch is really pretty um I just feel like when I put it on I don't like the feeling of it the texture is not the bee's knees it, it it feels kind of like a more of a lipstick formula with a lot of shine rather than a comforting lip balm which I'm not like um, a huge fan of but it is called a lip shine so maybe that's not what it's supposed to be I don't know, just a weird kind of odd in-between sort of formula. This is a true lip balm. This is the Nude Astro Lip Fetish in pink. Nude Astro is the color. So this is clear with pink glitter. And I don't really know why I bought this. I think I always wanted to buy it. It's been around for years now. All it does is deliver a pink glitter sheen and there's no color behind it and because the glitter in here is pretty thick it actually feels kind of rough and textured when you put it on your lips so i think it's just more for visual effect if you need a pink glitter a lot this would be good otherwise i actually don't think it's a very good lip balm those are my thoughts on those now getting into more of my favorite lip balmy type of products and some of you will probably disagree that these are lip balms because I think they are marketed probably in the lipstick category but like a really shiny finish. The My favorites are the Rouge Coco Flash formula from Chanel. I also have the Rouge Coco Bloom formula. I still prefer the Coco Flash. I know that there's like a new one now like Coco Balm like the Coco Flash, the Bloom, I think gives you more color, more color payoff. But I don't like the way it feels. Um, I like more of the high sheer shine, high shine sheerness of the flashes and it's just smoother to apply, quicker to apply. Um, I think that's why they call it flash, but maybe it's just the shine. <laughs> 
Um, I just l prefer the ease of this and the colors they offer are good. Although I find that Chanel's mostly focuses on red more than anything else. This is kind of a nothing shade. This is also the flash formula. It's just a topper. I probably wouldn't have picked it up if I saw it in person. I thought it would have like a little bit more gold shimmer to it. It's very subtle. But this is a very balmy formula that I think is really pretty and comfortable. Just quick to put on. So the, the flashes are my favorite kind of lipsticky balmy formula. Now if you want to really get into things that really treat your lips. That's a whole nother, like true lip balms, like chapstick kind of deal. That's not really about the makeup, you know what I mean? Um, I love the ones from Fresh. I've loved those for years. They're expensive though, but the formula on those is just like really nourishing. Um, I have a Summer Fridays Butter Lip Balm that I've been loving. It's really gloss-like though. I don't find that it lasts super long, but it feels really good. Love that one. Um, but these are the more makeup-y, lipsticky kind of balms, which I really appreciate. Now I am all shined and gooped up. Ooh, so I just wanna know, I could have included all the different lipsticks that I have now in my collection, which I used to not really be a lipstick gal. Um, I'm still working on it. I do have a lot of lipsticks that I just have kind of gone to waste, to be honest. Uh, especially because we're wearing masks and stuff and wearing lip glasses and the masks and lipsticks. It's like, I don't know. I don't know why I buy new lip products to be honest right now. Um, but forever since I've been wearing makeup, I was mostly a gloss gal. I just love low maintenance lips. Uh, I don't like touching up or worrying about getting lipstick on my teeth or all over my face. Um, so I've always loved lip glosses, um, but, and I've tried several different kinds over the years, obviously, like from the drugstore, Sephora, high end. Um, and honestly, I can never finish any lip product, but especially lip glosses, I just find that they go bad before I finish them. So it's really hard, um, to justify like buying a whole bunch of new lip glosses, even though like they're so tempting lip lip products in general i think are just such an easy product to buy in terms of makeup because it just feels like well if i the shade looks pretty it will probably work <laughs> it's just um i think easier to get right or get right and just right enough for you to wear whereas like eyeshadow and foundation it's you have to be like a lot has to be really good. <laughs> so I can go on for days talking about texture and preferences on lip gloss. Like basically all the stars have to align for me to like really like a lip gloss. Sometimes I like brands just because of the colors that they offer and they have kind of wacky formula like just different things that I haven't seen a lot of. So I'll pick them up. And then summer is just, they taste good, they feel good. Like it's just such a funny thing. Um, let's start with Lisa Eldridge because these are probably some of the newer formulas to my collection. These are the Gloss Embrace. I don't know, Gloss Something from Lisa Eldridge. These short little fat guys. Um, I have the shade Blush and a Fair, and these are the kind of lip glosses that I actually have to think about touching my face when I wear them because they, if I were to like get them on my face, you could see them kind of like a liquid lipstick just in shiny form because they are pigmented. They're more like cream glosses when we think about in like today's gloss terms. These are just like pretty much opaque glosses. So they have a lot of pigment, they have a lot of color payoff. I mean, it kind of looks like this and that you're wearing a glossy lipstick almost. Um, so these are pack a lot of punch and I think it's helpful to have like different varieties of glosses like this in your collection. 
If you want something to be a little bit more youthful, a juicy, fuller looking lip, they don't have to be super high shine. And when they have that much, much pigment, they don't uh, reflect as much, but they give a little bit of sheen. Um, so these are good if you just want to like match something to the rest of your face properly and have that right balance. It's good to have a lot of shades of these. I unfortunately don't have tons of cream lip glosses to kind of like match all my makeup looks to be honest. Um, so sometimes I do have to pull from my lipsticks to get like the right tone going on. But these are a really nice formula that is Lisa Elger, so it is on the pricey side to get these. But they are pretty and um, they kind of match her lipstick shades if you're into those. This is like a classic formula. I've actually had this one gloss for probably too long. This is Fussy from Fenty. This is Fussy's the name of the gloss. And this is the Gloss Bomb, and she has a lot of shades now and a lot of different formulas. I think she has like a cream formula. This one is shimmery and just kind of sheer and gorgeous and pretty and honestly one of those universally flattering shades, kind of a rosy tone. The texture of this is just dreamlike. It's very smooth. It's not sticky. It's not too thick. It's got like that cakey vanilla smell that some people like. I think it's enjoyable. Um, a lot of different options in, in this one. Honestly, a classic, classic lip gloss formula that is just, you gotta try it. They have mini sets at Sephora if you just wanna try a little bit just to see what it's like. But I think a lot of people love this one for good reason. And we're getting into Dior. I actually got this one I think in December, or maybe with my Sephora haul and the last one I did. This is the Dior Lip Glow Oil Color Reviver Cherry Oil. And this is in shade 10 Hollow Pink. This has some glitter in it, which I kind of regret getting. I just like the pink color of it. Um, so this is not quite a lip gloss. It's actually an oil and it feels different. It feels really good though. I do love the applicator on this because it's kind of giant, like ridiculously big. And it's just a comfortable formula. I just would maybe try something else without the glitter, but it is really pretty. Very luxe with the packaging. Um, I would definitely try another shade. This is from Wayne Goss. This looks kind of different and it's because it's frosty and I like this one because it smells like mint. Yeah, so if you want a frosty little look on your lips um, and it's very nude, this is the, oh, I can't read this, hibiscus, high shine, I think. So if you wanted just to put a little bit of something shiny in the middle of your bottom lip, this would be a good candidate because it's it's light, it's nude, it's really reflective. This also is a really like comfortable formula for a lip gloss. It it has like less slip than some of the other lip glosses. I think you could I could see where it could be kind of sticky, but it's a really pretty color. I mean, all lip glosses are kind of sticky, but <laughs> um, I think it's worth a try. And then this one is from Trixie Cosmetics. This is called the, the New Thing. This is an interesting shade and it has pretty sheer. It has a lot of glimmer to it. Love the unique um, applicator on here. And this is just a really fabulous smooth formula I love the they have she has like different shades like than typical I mean with all her makeup really and um, I think this is a really pretty kind of summer peachy shade it's got a lot of reflect it's not super pigmented it's kind of sheer I think this would go with probably a lot of people's looks uh, again something maybe in the little middle of the bottom lip Really pretty, cute packaging, heart shape. Love that. 
but there is a bit of glitter in that one. <laughs> All right, now into Pat McGrath. Ooh. I probably have the most lip glosses in this formula. So I have five here, and these are all the less glosses. Some of them have shimmer in them, but they're still called the less gloss. So here's the two that it's just a regular color. There's no shimmer really. There might be a slight shimmer in this one, but it's pretty faint. Actually, both of these. Um, and these colors look really familiar. Wow. I love a rose. I love a nude. So this is Divine Rose. This is Faux Real. I think these are really classic shades. Really, really smooth, no frills formula. I don't think these have a scent. Um, I wouldn't say like they're the most comfortable gloss formula, but they're just, they perform. And I love her shade range. She's got um, different finishes in her collection. I just think the glosses are really good. I don't know how other people feel about it, but I think they're worth at least trying one of them. These are all really shiny glitter ones, and I just think they're cool looking and different, especially this one. This is the Bronze Venus, and it's kind of brown, and it has this beautiful pink and gold shimmers in it. It's just gorgeous. This one has kind of got some purple glitters in here, so very unique looks. Not not going to go with a lot of things. This is Astral. And this one is more on what I used to wear back in the day. Like in high school, Future Femme. Very light gloss with a lot of shimmer. Uh, if you like that kind of uh, look, I think it's definitely doable. Now, what are my favorites? Gosh, I really love all of these. If I didn't, I probably would have tossed them out right now by now and they all serve a different purpose like these are all going to be good at for different kinds of looks i i'm thinking though i probably need to pick up some more that without any shimmer to go with a more of a variety of looks different tones and shades some more for warm looks more for cool and maybe some more red tone lip glosses <laughs> um but let's see what are my top contenders? I would say the Fenty I would go with if you wanted to pick something up from what I have. I think it's stunning. And the Lisa Aldridge is good too. More accessible would probably be the Fenty and probably the Pat McGrath glosses for you guys. Um, and that's kind of it in my collection, what I wanted to talk about with you guys today. Um, I hope you guys have a fun Valentine's Day. Um, if you're thinking about picking up something new for your lips for this holiday, um, if you are probably going to be wearing a mask off and on, I would go some with something that isn't going to transfer, maybe a little bit more on the low maintenance side, but just a little pop of color, something you can reapply without a mirror, nothing to stress about. Um, so I would go with like a shiny lipstick or a balm like I was talking about. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned the shades of the Rouge Coco that I have, but I think my favorite one is number 82, Live. This is this rosy shade here. Love that one. If you have my complexion, I think it's really flattering. The Coco Bloom one that I have is Dream. This is more on the natural nudie side. This is 116. And then the really low maintenance one I have of the Coco Bloom Coco Flash formula is 154 Dossier. I think this one was limited edition though. Just a real clear moment. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts. What are your favorite lip gloss formulas, lip balm formulas, lip tint formulas? Please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.